Hello everybody. Welcome to the first edition of Snake Nanigans and Stories. Um, I have here my friend Dewey. Um, hopefully he will behave for us this evening. Um, he is a really, really, really sweet boy. So hopefully he'll just not crawl around too much because I don't have my faithful partner Jonathan here to uh, help me wrangle and corral him. So welcome, welcome. Welcome to the first edition of Snake Nanigans and Stories. This is going to be a fun five-part series every Thursday in October at 7 p.m., 6 p.m. Central Time. We're going to have meet and greets with snacks, big and small, and of course, scary story time. <laughs> this big guy here is Dewey, and let me get his face for you. There he is. Say hi. All right, everybody. Whoa. No, you don't want to see my armpit, I'm sure. That's the last thing you want to see this evening. There he is. All right. And he's got that cute mustache. That's a signature of the, uh, of the red-tailed boas. So Dewey is a Colombian red-tailed and Suriname boa. But before I get to that fun stuff, I just want to welcome you again to Snake Nanigans and Stories. Um, and let you know a little bit about our lineup for this evening. So I'm going to tell you about my current reading and my latest project. And then we are going to introduce Spooky Talk. And so uh, we'll just cross that spooky bridge when we come to it. And we'll do a little meet and greet with Dewey. Oscar will pop in and out, I'm sure. Uh, I will do a Q&A throughout so you can drop comments and questions whenever you want to. And then I'm going to read three spooky stories. So, bear with me because I am here alone with Dewey and trying to wrangle him. He's very strong, so I'm going to try to do this as, at the least uh, awkwardly as possible. So, the book that I am reading right now is called Doll Bones by Holly Black. This is a great, great spoopy book um, for kids, young adults, adults. I um, I've read it before. I'm reading it again because it's just a nice, uh, nice thing to read around Halloween time. And um, I'm enjoying reliving that right now. And then, of course, shameless plug for my most recent project that I have released, which is the third edition of Breakfast with Bigfoot from Haunted Road Media. Uh, so <clears throat> there was that little snafu with the black and white copies on the first printing, which people tended to think was kind of cool, and it kind of has become a, a fun limited edition coloring book. Uh, but the color edition is also now available, so you can... Uh, follow the link from my website, ameliacotter.com. Um, go on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and find a copy of it, and I will be able shortly to start sending out autographed copies as well, if you are interested. All right, so Spooky Talk is this exciting thing. It's a card game that Jonathan and I found when we were in Galena. After we did our haunted Galena ghost tour, we stopped by their storefront the next day, which is called A Darkness Lovely, and they had these adorable cards. It's basically a thoughtful, thought-provoking question, fun for the whole family on a road trip, that kind of thing, um, about a topic related to spookiness, which fits what we're doing here pretty well. So I'm just going to randomly pick one out of the stack. I'm going to ask the question, and then I encourage you to answer in the comments with whatever your thoughts are. So I'm going to close my eyes and feel the magic of the cards and then pull one out. Okay, so, ooh. All right, this is going to be a good one. Dewey's getting away already. All right. FBI agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully are in charge of investigating creepy paranormal cases in The X-Files, a popular science fiction TV show and movie. The agents investigate government conspiracies, extraterrestrial life, and unexplained events and disappearances. What types of strange cases would you like to investigate if you were a special agent? So that's tonight's Spooky Talk Q&A. 
What types of strange cases would you like to investigate if you were a special agent? And we'll come back to that after, uh, at the end. What is happening? All right, so let's introduce you to Dewey. Ugh. Woo! So, <laughs> Dewey is a Suriname Colombian red-tailed boa. I wrote down his exact genetic uh, profile because snake enthusiasts are real wild and crazy about that. Um, he's a very gentle, very sweet boy. As you can see, he's just pretty active. So in his terrarium, he's not that active, but when you bring him out, he's excited. Um, I look like a tree. I feel like a tree. I guess to him and so he is exploring and checking everything out around him All right, so I took I took notes All right, so he was born on July 30th 2017 and I think we actually adopted him this June um, So he's about three years old. He's about four and a half feet long. He's pretty heavy. He's got that really cute mustache <laughs> um, and uh, we adopted him from the Chicago Herpetological Society. He was born in captivity. His, um, uh, his morph, as they are called, is paraglohet and erythristic. Um, some people also refer, have referred to him as a paradigm, which is a cool uh, type of morph as well. I'm not sure if that's actually what he is because paraglo is something different than paradigm, but that's getting into super nerdy um, snake modification genetics, so let's not worry about it. But he's one eighth boa constrictor constrictor, so red tail, Colombian red tailed boa, and he's seven eighths boa constrictor imperator. Uh, from Suriname. So Suriname is the country and the region where this particular uh, type of boa would be found. Um, they live in the wild around maybe between 10 and 20 years, uh, but in captivity they can live up to 40 years. So these are really, 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 really a commitment. Um, they tend to get, so uh, red tails tend to get uh, between like seven and nine feet long, sometimes longer. And the Surinams tend to get between six and eight feet long. Um, females are always uh, bigger than the males, longer than the males. Um, they can get up to 30 pounds and they can lay up to 30. Um, they give live birth, so their babies are born in these egg sacs, um, but they're they're born live. It's very cool. Um, go go to YouTube straight away if you care to to witness that and they can have up to 30 at once um, and they are terrestrial animals so they like to live in logs and burrows and things like that and then occasionally they'll climb trees they'll eat just about whatever they can get their hands on so our friend Dewey here eats rats exclusively although we could order him some quail if we decided to get creative our ball python sometimes eats uh, frozen thawed baby quail um, but right now he's just, he's eating one adult rat, um, approximately every 10 days or so. Let me see, what else do I have? Um, he will probably get around seven feet, or he could get to be around seven feet. He's already three years old, um, and he's four and a half feet long. Um, and sometimes it just depends on what their life is like when their babies are little, you know, that's an additional factor into how much they'll grow although snakes do continue to grow throughout their life and he sheds right now he sheds once every two months or so they will shed more frequently when they are younger he lives in a 40 gallon terrarium um, with some nifty decor so we have some naturalistic uh, branches and plants in there for him but then we have like two big plastic hiding boxes for him and a giant um, like a silver dog bowl for his water so he can't knock it over and so that he can soak in it if he wants to. They do like high humidity but he personally does not prefer super high temperature so he has a, a hot and a cooler section in his terrarium and he's always on the cooler side. He he never he never wants to be on the on the warmer side. Um, as in terms of personality, um, boas are kind of all over the place, and um, sometimes I think of boas in the pet trade as similar to like um, 
like pit bulls uh, as far as dogs go. They have the same kind of reputation. They're overbred. Um, if you're looking to get a snake and you want to get a boa, don't buy one. Adopt one from your local herpetological society. Um, it's the same as rescuing an animal. Uh, they end up kind of unloved and unwanted. They get too big for people to care for. And their personalities kind of vary when they're younger, where they can be... They can be kind of um, jerks when they're little and they may grow up to have a better temperament. Most of the time they do. Suriname boas are actually not known for having a pleasant temperament, but he very clearly does. He's extremely gentle and I have a 100% uh, trust relationship with him, as you can see, because I'm letting him near my face and I'm handling him alone. Um, I don't recommend handling a snake that is five feet or longer by yourself. Um, and he's not quite five feet, but he certainly is like strong, very, very strong. So let me show you his face. He has this beautiful face and this adorable mustache. Show the camera. But you also notice that he's got a little gray spot on the top of his nose. It's like a little scar that he had from rubbing. So this summer it got really warm in our apartment. And um, during the nighttime, he and our ball python had some nighttime adventures where they were um, they were pushing on the tops of their terrarium. And so he's got this little, it's like a wound. And um, as the temperatures cool down and he becomes less active, whenever he sheds that um, it will start to heal until it will shed off almost completely and then he won't have that mark anymore. Now Colombian red tails and, and also all of the, the boas are known for their beautiful, beautiful, beautiful markings. Um, so he's got these gorgeous saddles and he has this almost kind of square shape and you'll notice that like my other Snackums that I have are more, uh, they have more rounded shape but the boas, um, Dewey and then Pepper, who's a big hit with everybody always, um, have this more square shape and these absolutely gorgeous ornate tails. So of course it would be bright red um, and his body would be more gray in color if he was a regular uh, boa, but instead he is the Paraglow Het Anerthristic. Um, and so he has this creamy sort of buttery uh, coloration to him. I also wanted to mention that, uh, so the Suriname part is obvious because they are, you know, locale boas from Suriname, but the Colombian red-tailed boas, um, you know, it's misleading that uh, the name is, the name can be misleading, but boas, uh, these, this family of boas in general is found all the way from um, Mexico through Central America and to South America and I think all the way down through Peru. So, with that being said, does anybody have any questions right now about Dewey? And if you don't have questions right now, um, <laughs> I've flashed my armpits like 50 times tonight already, um, then go ahead and feel free to ask throughout. And I will ask our spooky talk question one more time, which is that if you were a cool X-Files investigator like Mulder or Scully, these cards are probably a little dated, um, what types of strange cases would you like to investigate? All right. And thank you to everybody who has joined so far. So for my next challenge, I'm going to try and read uh, with the snake in my hand at the same time. It's going to be like a magic trick. So I'm really excited um, because I have some new material for us for Spooky Stories and uh, Spooky Story Tuesdays. I went through a lot of my favorite stories and then I left a few just in case we would have the wondrous occasion to be together again. But I also got a new book called Short and Shivery. Um, and you all may remember this from when you were kiddos. This is kind of like the updated cover to it, but I remember... Um, when I was a kid, there was one that had like a skeleton on the front that was reading and I was always fascinated by the cover. So this is uh, Short and Shivery, 30 Chilling Tales, retold by Robert D. San Suchi, I think is how you pronounce it. If I'm wrong, do correct me. And there was some great stuff in here. But I came across one of my... He's in the microphone. Okay. 
I came across one of my true favorites, um, which you may recognize the name of, and it's called Taily Po. So I've heard different versions of this uh, throughout my tenure as a storyteller, uh, you know, as a kiddo and today. Um, and so this one is adapted by Robert, sort of, um, he adds his own little flourishes. And there's an illustration too, which is pretty cool. Let me find out who the illustrator is. Catherine Coville. All right, so wish me luck with handling all this at the same time. Not so very long ago, an old man lived by himself in the backwoods of West Virginia. He had a log cabin with a single room that held a stove, a bed, a table, a chair, and a big open fireplace built of field stone. One night the man sat eating a plate full of beans and bread and regretting that he hadn't been able to catch a single fish in the lake behind his cabin or bag a single possum or deer for his supper. He was startled to look across the table and see the strangest creature he had ever seen sitting on its haunches in the far corner of the room, staring at him. It had jaws like a weasel, ears like a fox, piercing yellow eyes like an owl, and a monkey's body, and was covered in bright red fur. But mainly, it had a huge, excuse me, long tail that coiled around and around it, the way a rattler coils on itself before it strikes. Very rude. Very rude, Dewey. What the, cried the man, how'd you get in here? He grabbed his carving knife from beside the loaf of bread and went after the animal. The thing gave a screech like nothing the man had heard before. Then it scrambled out through a chink between two of the cabin's logs, but it wasn't quick enough. With a single slice, the man cut the creature's tail off while the rest of the animal scampered away to the woods. The man walked back to the table and stretched out the tail, marveling at its length. After a few minutes, he decided that meat was meat and that was what he was hungry for right now. So he cooked up that tail, found it tasted a little like rabbit, and ate it all in one sitting. After that, he plugged up the hole between the logs, went to bed, and soon was fast asleep. He hadn't been asleep very long when he heard something scratching at the door, just like a cat. Pretty soon, he heard a call. taily po taily po just give me my taily po now, he had three dogs that slept under the house. He whistled for them, and they came charging out and chased the creature far into the woods. But only two of his dogs came back. When the man saw this, he cursed a blue streak. Then he sent the dogs to sleep under the floorboards and went back to bed himself. A short time later, he heard the same clawing at the front door as the creature tried to get in. Then he heard it call through a crack in the door, Taily po Taily po just give me my Taily po Once again, the man whistled up his dogs from underneath the cabin, and they chased the creature all the way down the road, snapping so close behind that if it had still had a tail, it would have lost it to the hounds. The man heard the dogs giving chase until the woods swallowed up the sound, but a little later, only one dog returned. Again, the man cursed loudly. This time he had his remaining dog sleep at the foot of his bed. In the smallest hours of the morning, he heard something scrabbling at the window, like a night bird trying to get in. Through the cracked glass he heard, Taily po Taily po I've got to have my Taily po Quick as he could, he flung the cabin door open and sent his last dog out into the night. He heard the dog charging around the corner of the cabin and heard the creature screeching and scrambling away. After that, things were pretty quiet, but the last hound never did return. The man stayed awake a long time, listening, but... He heard nothing more. Finally, just before dawn, he fell asleep, but he woke up a few minutes later. He was sure he'd heard something in his room. He looked into the far corner and saw that patch he'd put over the hole was gone. Then he heard something scrabbling up the foot of his bed. A minute later, he saw a fox's ears, a weasel's jaws, and two huge yellow eyes, just like an owl's, looking at him. He tried calling for his dogs, but they were gone. He was too frightened to climb out of bed. He just kept staring while the red, monkey-like creature crept closer and closer. Taily po taily po it growled. Just give me my taily po But, 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 the man stuttered, 
I haven't got your taily po. Then the horrible creature, which was by then sitting on the man's knees, snarled and said, Oh, yes, you have. And it jumped on the man's chest and scratched him all to pieces. There are those who say that the creature got its taily po back, and some who say it didn't. But the fact is, that old man and his dogs were never seen again in West Virginia or anywhere else. And there is the illustration. I'll pick another one from this book next week because I'm just tickled with it. How's everybody doing so far? Everybody's good? No questions? No concerns? All right. Oop. Going for the microphone again. The next story I'm going to read, of course, uh, is going to come from the scary stories to tell in the dark book. Um, how can I help myself? But it's a great way to kick off this season. Um, happy October, by the way. It's October 1st, and it's also a blood moon and a harvest moon. So this is a, a good time for us to be thinking about um, changes, uh, how we've, how far we've come, and, and where we're going, and our what we plan to to harvest. So hopefully that will be good in our own lives and um, the God's willing in our society right now as well. The story that I'm going to read to you is going to be called The Thing. And I remember this was another one that really got me when I was a kiddo, even though uh, it's fairly short, but the illustration really, really also um, haunted my dreams, as I'm sure it did for many of you. Ted Martin and Sam Miller were good friends. They spent a lot of time together. On this particular night, they were sitting on a fence near the post office talking about one thing and another. There was a field of turnips across the road. Suddenly, they saw something crawl out of the field and stand up. It looked like a man, but in the dark, it was hard to tell for sure. Then it was gone. But soon it appeared again. It walked halfway across the road, then it turned around and went back into the field. Then it came out a third time and started toward them. By now, Ted and Sam were scared and they started running. But when they finally stopped, they decided, and then here's the illustration. They decided they were being foolish. They weren't sure what had scared them, so they decided to go back and get a better look. Pretty soon they saw it, for it was coming to meet them. It was wearing black pants, a white shirt, and black suspenders. Sam said, I'm going to try to touch it. Then we'll know if it's real. He walked up to it and peered into its face. It had bright, penetrating eyes that sunk deep in its head. It looked like a skeleton. Ted took one look and screamed, and again he and Sam ran. There goes the mic. Stand by. I need that screen with the music to come on. Uh-oh. Ooh, we in trouble now. The way. Hello, everybody. I hope that you can find your way back. Uh, I was very rudely interrupted uh, by a snafu from earlier uh, with the mic falling over at somehow, I don't know, bl I blame that uh, on for ending the, uh, the video because I looked over and part of the microphone was sitting on the keyboard and I think that like prompted the video to end. Um, even though Dewey is over here on this arm and the microphone is over here, so maybe it was paranormal activity. Um, but just kidding, it was probably a glitch. So I hope that you all can find your way back so that we can learn the harrowing conclusion of the Mama Sarah story and, uh, and move on. I'll continue with that. And I do want to remind you one more time that our spooky talk question for the evening is what types of strange cases would you like to investigate if you were a special agent? So uh, I hope that you're able to rejoin me, uh, even though there was a little 
technical snafu there. I'm trying to figure all of this out on my own with a snake on my arm. So basically, you know, it's rocket science. Okay. I'm going to start from uh, the part of the story that uh, includes waking up. So that should put us all right back where, where we're familiar with, uh, with that point in the story. It was approximately 5.15 a.m. the next morning as the sun began to rise and shine through the drapes of the bedroom window. Deborah was asleep to my right between me and the bedroom wall. As I looked at the sun coming through the bedroom window, I noticed a white figure of a woman to the left of the window in the corner beside the dresser. We both stared at one another for a minute or so, Deborah still asleep beside me. I did not want to startle her or our visitor. The form slowly drifted toward the windows and I could see Mama Sarah as plain as day. She merged with the sunlight coming in through the window and was gone in an instant. I felt good, not unnerved, about seeing her. I could hear Taylor in the kitchen, so I rose from bed to greet him good morning. I shared with him what I had seen, well, who I had seen, only minutes earlier. He was pleased and noted that even though no one had seen a ghost in the old plantation home, several relatives had heard footsteps upstairs or felt the presence of someone touch or caress them. Taylor and I then left to feed his cattle and stopped to drink from the old spring house using an old dried gourd as our cup. The delicious water was crystal clear, so refreshing and ice cold. We did not share the news with Deborah about the spirit until after she had fixed us a wonderful breakfast. After the breakfast dishes were washed and dried and put away, we sat her down in Taylor's living room and told her about my experience. Deborah was not at all upset about what had occurred. It had been 20 years since Mama Sarah had passed away. I told Deborah that I felt Sarah was curious about who was sleeping in her room, especially who the man was that was sleeping on her long-deceased husband's side of the bed, and when she recognized me and knew I recognized her, she was at peace and left us to enjoy her lovely home. Amelia, I have been back to that home countless times since that trip in 1996, and I have never had that experience again. Okay, so thank you for bearing with me. I hope you were able to find your way back here uh, for the exciting conclusion of the first edition, first episode, whatever you want to call it, of Snake Nanigans and Stories. So next week, um, our featured guest is going to be Moonlight. She's our spotted python, and you all have met her before. Um, she is a delight, and I will have another spooky talk. I will have some more stories to share with you. And as always, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. Um, if you have um, anything that you want to ask me uh, that you don't want to ask, you know, in front of other people, no question is stupid. Just go ahead and reach out to me uh, whenever you want to via message um, or email and check out my website. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Pollock. Jonathan Pollock, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, check out my website, ameliacotter.com, for my other upcoming events and appearances this October. Jonathan, question. What types of strange cases would you like to investigate if you were a special agent? Uh, I don't know. Psychic spies. Psychic spies. All right, we've got sight. We've got one vote for psychic spies, which hopefully will not be like the next on you know the leaderboard for curses of 2020. <laughs> um, I think I would be interested. I would be interested in um, exploring more about people's UFO experiences. Uh, that's such a little known topic to me, and after working at the Adler Planetarium for so many years, it's hard for me to um, believe. Uh, that we're being visited by inhabitants from other planets, but I am certainly fascinated about the phenomena of UFO inhabitant interactions and abductions and all this other wild and craziness. So uh, that would certainly be fun and interesting. And I think cryptids would be fun to uh, investigate too. So I don't know, maybe there's a job for me in the FBI in the future. Uh, that or Snake Wrangler, huh? So everybody, wave Dewey goodbye and blow him a little kiss. And, uh, oh, he is not, 
There you go. And the sweet little mustache. He says goodbye. And he has these beautiful eyes, too. If you notice, he's got those gorgeous, gorgeous uh, whites of his eyes with the... He's just the sweetest. All right. Thank you. Thank you, my faithful assistant. All right. Everybody have a great night. I'll see you back again next Thursday. Same time, same place. Happy October.